All right, I'd like to call the August 2023 ZBA meeting to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Matt Kaiser. Present. Keith Perkins. Here. Richard Brooks. Here. Anthony Jones. Here. Okay, first order of business will be to appoint Mr. Jones as a voting member of the board, full member of the board. Second order of business will be approval of the minutes of the meeting of the June 7, 2023 meeting. What's the wish of the board? Mr. Brooks. I'll make a motion to accept them as presented. We have a motion to accept them. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a second by Mr. Jones. All those in favor of approving the, approving the minutes, raise your right hand. I was not here. I will abstain. Okay. Old business. Move on to number two. Old business. Any old business that may, may come before the board? Any old business? Ms. Crosley. No old business. Any old business from board members? Okay. Move on to item number three. New business. EFI Motorsports LLC is seeking a variance from table 4A5 to allow used automobile sales for a property located in 20 Rescue Lane in the Industrial District Assessors Map 58, Lot 6G, ZBA Case 10, 2023. It's a public hearing. I'm going to open the public hearing. Uh, due to the fact that we only have four members on the board, the applicant has the choice of not continuing tonight and continuing, continuing the meeting in September uh, with when we do hopefully have five members. What's the wish of the applicant? Going to proceed tonight. Very well. Uh, Ms. Crosley. So the applicant is seeking a variance to allow used motor vehicle sales on a lot located in the industrial district. The applicant currently operates a motor vehicle repair garage station at this location as well. If this variance is granted, site plan approval would be required um, pursuant to Table 4A5, um, 21 Automobile Sales Note 3, which requires site plan approval. Um, and so we did provide some history of the parcel. There are no variances or special exceptions um, associated with this parcel. There is a site plan from 2000 regarding the previous welding supplies use um, for in fabrication. Um, the applicant has addressed all five criteria and the application is complete for the board to take into considerations and hear the applicant. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Ms. Crosley? See you now. Will the applicant please come forward, state your name, and describe wh why we should grant the variance, why, how it meets the five criteria. Can you turn the microphone on? Sorry. There we are. Yeah. Can you hear me okay now? Much better. Okay. So I'm, my name is Mark Swanson. I'm the owner of EFI Motorsport, LLC. Um, we provide repair services um, for a range of on and off-road vehicles, um, you know, kind of a niche business, really. Uh, we service a lot of mid-90s uh, Audis and Volkswagens, um, kind of a, a unique business in the sense that we have customers from all over. We actually have customers that truck their vehicles all the way from Florida or California or, you know, all around the country. Um, so if you Google our, our business, you'll see us listed all, all over the place in forums online and stuff like that. So the nature of my um, request for a uh, used car license isn't really to, um, you know, have a, you know, 100 cars a day come by my lot and look at vehicles. No, it's um, sites like Bring a Trailer. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Um, it's highly niche vehicles that uh, people are looking for specifically um, from across the country. And so these are things that people would look at online and then come to our location, likely staying in local hotels and spending money at local establishments in order to come purchase them and take them home. So, um, you know, we're not very much like a, a traditional used car business, um, you know, which is why we fit well in an industrial park, because we don't need frontage of any variety with what the nature of our business is. So, um, I think that's about it. Uh, we, we really wouldn't be an impact as far as traffic. Like I said, we're, we're not looking to, you know, have people, you know, off the street come and looking at vehicles. It's really not the nature of our business. Um, so we feel that this fits the spirit of um, the uh, the difference of, of needing this variance for an industrial zone because you know clearly we're not high commerce we're, we're mostly you know industrial in our nature okay if you could go just briefly go through your application and, and the criteria how you meet those five criteria in your application I actually don't have a copy with me do you have a copy somewhere with you so um, as to the um, criteria um, first criteria, um, let's see, 
uh, explain how the proposal would not diminish surrounding property values. Um, you know, uh, as mentioned, uh, you know, we're, we're not a business that needs a neon sign outside that, that says that we sell used cars. Um, and so as a result, um, you know, people would be coming in from out of the area to spend money at local establishments, which by nature raises the values around because it causes people to spend money in the area. Um, to criteria two, explaining how granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Um, again, you know, there, I don't think you can go to a single business in this area that would say we don't want more business or more money from outside clientele. So um, I think that meets that criteria. Uh, 3A, explain how literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance result in an unnecessary hardship. Um, so uh, no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property. Um, kind of repeating what I've said in, in uh, cases one and two, um, there is no detriment to the public um, or area businesses by granting a request because we're not causing additional traffic or any impedance to businesses in the area. Um, Again, because most of this is uh, people that are coming in from out of state um, or out of the area to, to purchase said vehicles. Um, and in case two, the proposed use is a reasonable one. Um, increasing our revenue allows us to continue to potentially employ more staff to help with the pre preparation of these specialized vehicles and also to, um, you know, uh, pay rent and to continue our business in the area and, you know, to further the tax basis of, of Summersworth. Uh, criteria 3B, <clears throat> if the criteria in 3A are not established, please explain how an unnecessary hardship exists if owning to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in that area. The property cannot reasonably be used in strict conformance with the ordinance and a variance is therefore necessary to enable a reasonable use of it. So as you know, um, rents and property values in the area are continually going up. Um, and I can tell you operating a 13,000 square foot building there, um, the rent is high and so is the tax. Uh, part of the reason for needing a, a used car license is to improve my ability to bring in revenue and, and thus pay tax and to pay my employees. Um, criteria four, explain how granting the variance would do substantial justice. Um, you know, certainly there are other local cities um, where industrial zones uh, used car sales are allowed. Um, I looked it up um, and certainly in areas in the North Country, um, uh, industrial zones allow car sales. Uh, I can't specifically speak to Dover, but um, you know, there are areas in New Hampshire where industrial zone used car dealers are allowed. Um, so explain how the proposal is not contrary to the spirit of the ordinance. As I've previously mentioned, traffic volume in this case will be the same. We don't anticipate any additional uptick or you know, uh, detriment to the area in terms of traffic caused by this ordinance being, or the variance being approved. Okay. Okay, now as part of the process, we allow the, uh, if there's any abutters or people who want to speak for or against your, your proposal, mm -hmm. we'll ask them to come up and then we'll ask you back up and we'll ask you some questions. Okay, do you need this back? Anybody in the, in the audience who would like to speak, either for or against? Nope, don't sit down then. Come right back up. Okay, questions from the board. Mr. Jones. I guess I'll take it away. Um, so I, I think I like what you're saying. I like your application. I don't think I have an issue with one or two. But then we get to three, and three is kind of the crux of the zoning board as it pertains to any town in New Hampshire. Um, you are requesting a use that is not allowed in the industrial zone and the intent of the industrial zone as it's written in the ordinance is that the district is provided for manufacturing and similar uses which generally do not include over-the-counter retail sales of goods or services as a significant portion of the business. So what is unique about this property that why you feel that you need um, you know, motor vehicle sales to make productive use of the land? Sure. So <clears throat> we specialize, and, and manufacturing is indeed one of the, the core things that we do. We make parts for those niche vehicles that I spoke of. You know, the, for example, the 1992 to 1995 Audi S4 and S6. Um, it's a reign of a few thousand vehicles here in the U.S. that we are the only shop in the country that produces engine calibrations for those vehicles. Um, and so as a result, if you ask any one of the owners of those vehicles where to go to buy one of those cars, it's our shop. 
And so by nature, I've been doing so personally, selling them under my own personal name, but you're limited uh, in terms of, I think, four vehicles per year or something like that. You're allowed under your own name. And so logistically, having a, a used car dealership uh, license allows me to sell as many as I'd like from that property. The land there is large. Um, there's um, Favorite Foods, the, the um, property owner. They own um, the uh, warehouse there on the corner on Interstate Drive, and they purchased um, the 20 Rescue property uh, initially because they wanted to store their trucks there, which they do on the other side of the property. But the side that we uh, rent uh, includes uh, several acres worth of land for um, you know, the, the vehicles to be, to be displayed and stored and, and sold. Um, so from our end, it's actually an ideal property because of the land space. Um, it, it has a large manufacturing area as well as a large area to be able to display and or sell vehicles. And that's something that would be very difficult in a uh, commercial zone uh, on, on frontage on, uh, you know, a high traffic area like 108. You know, that would require, you know, customers coming in and buying cars every day. That's not what we do. And so as a result, purchasing that or renting that property on, on Rescue Lane is exactly what we do. It's low volume but highly niche vehicles, which is exactly what that property does for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me ask kind of the same question, but with a different tack. Okay. Um, so if uh, Favorite Foods, for example, came in here and they also wanted to open up a used car dealership, is there anything, if we grant your variance, is there anything that separates your application from their application if they were to submit one? Um, well, for one, we are coming into this with an existing relationship with a range of vehicles. So in okay. other words, you know, we are the niche for a particular product line. As far right. as I know, Favorite Foods is not. Um, so, you know, it'd be highly unusual for them to request something like that. Um, and also, Favorite Foods would certainly require high traffic volume in order to be able to sell vehicles. We do not. You know, we are definitely a, a very, very niche business when it comes to a, the line of automobiles that we service. Okay, thank you. Other questions from the, for the applicant? Mr. Brooks. <coughs> I assume that you would meet all the requirements for the uh, deal a portion through the state as far as what they require? In fact, we did. Uh, so we actually submitted the application. The only reason we're here is because I wasn't aware that uh, used cars were not allowed in the industrial zone. So we were 100% complete with our application, but we got bounced by the city of Summersworth because, of course, it's not allowed in an industrial zone. And do you have a rough idea of how many cars this might entail when you... We anticipate somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 cars a year. So not a lot. But maybe not that many at one time. Oh, absolutely not. Be a smaller number sitting there on display, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, how many would you? In other words, if the board were to limit you on how many cars you could have there for sale, Mm -hmm. how many would that? What would be a good number? I mean, um, I would say an average that would be completely reasonable would be somewhere between five and ten. And to be honest, I wouldn't call that, you know, a problem. Because obviously you can't, they, the city could, if the city wanted to enforce, you know, that they could enforce, you know, some number over a year. So it's I really, they, the only way they can enforce it is, would be by counting the number of cars that are actually. And when I say 5 to 10, you know, it, it sounds like a very close number, right? 25 a year or 5 or 10 at one time. Well, you don't know how long it's going to take to sell a particular vehicle. So, you know, naturally they, you may need to have that many on display at any given time for people to look at. Right, correct. Okay. So just, just to make sure I understand the criteria, I'm going to ask a couple questions just to kind of make sure. So you kind of went through it a little bit. So if you so had a used car dealership, because that's right it was, is that the right way to terminology? It is. Term- okay, so would that in any way lower the property values of the neighborhood properties? I see no reason it would. And certainly I believe all the abutters have been notified, so if they had a concern about that. So why do you think that? Why do I think what? Why do you think it won't lower... The other property values. Because there's no local advertising about it whatsoever. So how would anybody even know that we're doing it? Okay. All right. So the other one would be contrary to public interest, which typically to put is it's not going to change the characteristics of the neighborhood is the one way of putting it. Mm -hmm. Um, Won't affect safety. Um, There's a couple other things you can look at. We look at is, you know, will affect threaten to public health, safety, or welfare, um, or injure other people's rights. Um, So do you think... With your application, do you, do you believe that it would change the character of the neighborhood? We do not. Um, so uh, being where we're located, if you look at the, the property map, you can kind of see that the property is quite secluded. It, it's very well back on a private way. Rescue Lane is actually privately owned by Favorite Foods. So um, it, it's very much nestled on its own out, out in the back. Okay. So um, we, talked, we already talked about the, hard, the hardship 
criteria, as we call it. Um, grand advantage with substantial justice. Obviously, you, you, that would be good for you. Um, Spear the ordinance. Okay, that's all I have. Any other questions for the applicant? Last comments by the applicant. Yeah, I really appreciate your time reviewing this. Um, again, this is um, something that would really support our business in terms of revenue and allow us to you know, potentially hire uh, additional staff to help prepare and or market these vehicles online, um, you know, which could be a, a benefit to the tax basis, um, you know, and also you know, putting bread and milk on the table for, for people that are into this industry. So, um, you know, again, we appreciate your time and um, I hope to have a positive outcome. Okay, thank you. Have a seat. Thanks. With that, I'm gonna close the public hearing. First order of business is uh, whether this has any regional impact. Does anyone on the board feel it has regional impact? If not, the chair will entertain a motion to state such. Mr. Perkins. Uh, I move that the variance request of EFI Motorsports LLC does not have potential for regional impact. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Brooks. Discussion, any discussion on this? The motion is that it does not have any regional impact. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Passes 4-0, no regional impact. Discussion on the application. All pretty quiet. Oh, Mr. Brooks. I guess I'll start. Okay. Um, so obviously this property sits back off of a dead end road essentially in an industrial park it is very secluded like the gentleman was saying um, it's kind of unique in that sense Be its location is secluded so you know again whereas we have to consider the neighbors and the impact on the surrounding area I really don't see that being whatsoever of a problem in this situation um, you know when we get to the hardship end of it you know you get into businesses and especially niche businesses they they have their own little cottage industry a lot of times and some of these lead over into other things which don't always line up with that zoning so i kind of on the fence on this one um i just know that <clears throat> obviously it's in the automotive industry whether you're repairing them body work simple repairs you know or selling them that it's all the same sort of stuff. Even somebody that's selling cars is still going to have to do work on them to be able to sell them. So these two businesses seem to go very much hand in hand at the same time. Just my observations of this situation. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. I mean, the, the business, it, it, the, the location is, is suited for the business. What we're, we're, we're dealt with here is, is it's zoned industrial. The, the criteria is that the zoning basically unfairly or burdens this property as compared to other properties in the industrial zone. And so this one should be allowed to sell cars where other ones may not. So what is the uniqueness of this property that burdens it such that it should be allowed to sell cars and others? And the one you're talking about is maybe, potentially it could be a, the fact that it's an isolated property in the, in the back there. Other comments, discussion? <clears throat> another <clears throat> another thought on that same thing. Obviously, if it was closer to 108, this would be in a zone that would allow this. It's simply set back further, which is industrial zone. And I believe that's a commercial industrial along 108, it allowing is. both. But once you step back away from 108, it becomes industrial only, which then doesn't allow the car sales. So... You know, again, industrial, commercial, sometimes they kind of blend in with each other here. But, you know, this seems to be a development that took pieces back further than off of 108. You know, it is most of these industrial parks seem to sit right out on the road and be close to 108. This one seems to be unique in that fashion. Do we think that it meets the other four, other criteria? What's the board, what's the what's the board? At least meet meet the one one two four and five. Any discussion on those? Uh, 
I mean, the, the applicant provided, provided justification it didn't would not diminish surrounding property values. I would I would agree that uh, if you had used auto sales, if we limit it, it would, and it doesn't become you know to some number, um, it doesn't become a parking lot, and I, I think it wouldn't affect the neighboring commercial zone. Um, contrary to public interest, um, that's the, except for the characteristic neighborhood. But I think if it's a small uh, auto deals, it may, you know, auto dealership, it wouldn't change the characteristic neighborhood, uh, which def definitely do substantial justice for the applicant, allowing the continuous building. I mean, that was his primary his primary justification is that it would would help him would help him keep his niche niche business, um, and contrary to spirit of the ordinance, so. The spear of the ordinance, the one thing I, I did looking at, and, and Mr. Jones brought it up, was the definition of industrial zone. And an industrial zone is kind of interesting in which it says that, uh, of course, I didn't bookmark it, which I should have. It, it allows, here it is, it, it states that the, just, the district is provided for manufacturing and similar uses, which ge generally do not include over the counter retail sales, generally, it doesn't say prohibits, or services such as service as a significant portion of the business. And he's basically saying this wouldn't be a significant portion of his business, especially if we limited it. Um, so it kind of implies it's, it's, in the, doesn't, it's within the spirit of the ordinance. It's just a matter of whether it meets the hardship criteria of three. And uh, I, he, he did bring up that obviously, uh, you know, the food business is not, they're not, they don't have cars stacked outside, whereas he has the cars there already. Um, so that certainly helps with uh, not harming a butters or being in the public interest because the cars are already there. Um, you know, there's, there's going to be cars parked outside regardless of if he trucks one more in to sell. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, it's really, as it always comes down to, the hardship criteria is the proper unique. Yeah, I, th I just think what I'm having a struggle with is like part of that uniqueness is because of the existing use, the existing allowed use. Right, which is kind of, is not what you, it has to be based on the property. Right. And Mr. Brooks brought up the potential that you, know, you could use that it was isolated, oh, isolated back there was that. And it's up against the CI zone, that's good. Uh, it's close, it's not quite, it's, it's one lot off, it's one lot off the uh, CI zone. But it's an allowed use in the CI zone, so it's not like it's up against a residential zone or anything. Yep. I don't have much else to put into so What's this. the thoughts of the board? What are you thinking? Might as well make a motion, I guess. Something, yeah. So, I'm I'm going to make a motion to approve it because I I believe that being so close to the commercial industrial zone, just tucked away off on its own, makes it unique in that sense. It's well within. You know, I guess another thought here just popped into my head is. I know that in the past when car dealers have been proposed at places that aren't allowed, it's usually, oh, they want them out on 108. They don't want them downtown. So this is just off of 108. Again, that's the area that it's zoned for just out in front of it. This just sets further back. It's almost that spacing back from the road that plays in here. So, again, I, I think it's in a unique spot because of that. Um, so with that, I'm going to make a motion after review of the application, the file, and all the information presented to the board. I feel that I, all five criteria have been satisfied because of the uh, situation and factors 
discussed here tonight, and I move that the request for EFI Motorsports LLC for a variance from Table 4.A.5 to allow used automobile sales for a property located at 20 Rescue Lane be granted. Can I not request, suggest we put a limitation on the number of automobiles available for sale? I, I wouldn't be opposed to that. So it's your motion. I'll say a dozen cars. Okay, limited to 12 cars. Yep. We have a second. I'll second it. We have a second by Mr. Jones. Discussion on the motion. So we have a motion to approve it um, with a limit of 12 cars um, for, at any, any one time. At so, one time or in a 365-day period? At one time. Is yeah, I don't, think, I don't think you could manage a 365. I mean, how would it help the city enforce that? Well, I guess, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's my thought. Is the only time, only way the city can enforce Fe it is by Fewer than 12 there. cars with stickers on them. Yeah, th it's yeah. Them, yeah. And, and the idea with this is it would prevent him from stacking in 100 vehicles and then looking like a potential junkyard or something. Well, I guess my only thought is uh, now that the parcel has, if, if, you know, if we approve this, it has a special exception to allow for a used car dealership, what's stopping him from selling it to Hyundai, and then they used it for extra storage for used cars to sell out of. You know, that's... You know that's kind of the end game as a possibility. So if you limit a dozen cars, that makes it less marketable to them. Would it also be incorrect to maybe put a limit that it's for this business only? If this business were to relocate or close, that variance would go away. I'm not sure we can. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's a mechanism to expire a variance on transfer property. I, don't, I think it Just only applies to, uh, when you have a handicap. Handicap, right, Ms. Crosley? That's the only time I know you can actually. I know you can do it. Yeah, handicap. There's the provision about the correct. handicap, correct? Um, but so the condition right now, as stated, would be that they could have no more than twelve cars for sale on site at one time. Correct. So there's a limit of how many cars they could mm. display for sale as well. So if another dealer came in, they would be restricted to that as well. Right, that's what I mean. It stops, uh, if, if we just gave him the general option, then he could sell it to a real dealership, and then they might sell 300 cars out of there, um, which I think is against our intent because it's in the industrial zone. Right. As long as they only, so right now as the condition is proposed, as long as they only kept 12 cars on site, though? They could still do it, right. It would be fine. So they yeah. could sell, in theory, 300, they would just have to circulate only 12 at a time on site. This would be really fast turnover, which doesn't, <laughs> I don't know how realistic that is, but. Yeah. No, and the, the, like you said, the enforcement mechanism is difficult too. And, and another thing I think that, you know, speaking of enforcement, we've got other businesses in town that, you know, may not have a junkyard license or used car dealer license. And, mm. You know, of course, when you call the state to have something done about it, oh, well, we'll pull the license. Well, they ain't got one. Well, we can't do anything. So right. it also lets the state and the city have oversight by it being a legal licensed. Agreed. Is there anything that we want to do about, like, uh, um, is there physical signage for this? Like at, at the beginning of the industrial park for, like, each business? There is a community sign. This also will require site plan. Based off of our regulations, any automobile sales re requires a level of site plan, so there will be another look at it. I thought it just prevent like physical advertising. I guess it wouldn't matter. I don't. It wouldn't make a difference. Yeah. A lot of sign ordinances too. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ms. Crosley, j just so if, if we approve, if the board approves this, in a commercial zone, is. Is this changing? Is there any way? It, let me ref, let me think through this. Hold on a second. I'm just I just want to make sure we're not think, we're not opening Pandora's box if we do approve it, or and get to allowing other used car dealers in the in the industrial zone. Would you want to reference it that it shall be accessory to the primary use, which is? Ooh, that's good. The motor vehicle repair garage station, because that's permitted use. And if this is their accessory business to it, which it allows that it's not the primary use to be consistent with the industrial zone, what did the language say? How do you, how do you make sure it's accessory because most dealerships have repair shops? That's a good question. Can't make any more money at one versus the other. <laughs> which isn't something well, we're not going to force people to open yeah. their books for I, enforcement. I know, I know, I know. I know. 
Um, Obviously, a new car dealer, a used tricky. car dealer, usually has a yard full of cars, so it's pretty clear that they're a car dealer, whereas this would probably look more like a repair shop having such a low number of cars. Yeah. Do you transfer these cars, like, um, from people who own yeah, these? You have a motion on the floor. You can't really have discussion with the applicant at this time. Sorry, Anthony. Okay, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um. Well, we could at least put it in a if we wanted to, we at least put it in a motion so it's understood yeah. um, that it's a, it's. A I mean, at the same time, too, for typically for automobile sales. So, if a new dealership was coming in, we require primarily they be new s cars. This one is seeking the variance in its allow for allowance of the used car. So, and we don't. The way that that is regulated is typically it's with a dealership, so the primarily requires like 51% of those are new. Mm -hmm. It's not something we go typically to check. Yeah, no, I think I'm happy with it with 12 so cars. Should, as we as make that, should we include an emotion that it's A, that it's used cars, and B, that it's a second, and, and it's not the primary? Uh, it's in the application, but we can include it. The language for it is um, labeled as used cars, so I think that's what language sufficient. Is it's the specifically used to cars. allow used car automobile sales. Okay, so that's that's covered. Just, just trying to give the city the bite. That if it makes the so board more comfortable to say that it shall be accessory to the the primary use shall be the motor vehicle. I, I can reword this if. If that's I'll, what would be you feel keeps the intent of yeah, what to, you're to looking allow for used to allow. automobile sales as an a accessory business element of the property. Yeah, and you could attach it to their motor vehicle repair garage station, which to, is their to primary use. Accessory to motor vehicle repair. Mm -hmm. Motor vehicle repair, okay. So that would be, that would complete my motion at this point, I guess. Okay, so for clarity, would, would we need to restate the motion? Let's do that. Okay, so right. Mr. <coughs> you, Mr. Jones, we're gonna strike that motion, mm -hmm. Mr. Brooks, and we're gonna restate the motion. <coughs> So, after review of the application, the file, and all the information presented to the board, I feel that all five criteria have been satisfied because of the reasons discussed and stated here tonight. And I move that the request for EFI Motorsport LLC for a variance from Table 4.A.5 to allow used automobile sales as an accessory business use for a property located at 20 Rescue Lane with the following condition that no more than 12 vehicles on the lot at a time for sale. I second. You second that. Is that good, Ms. Ms. Crosley? I think so, yes. We're here to help. We're here to, here to work together. Okay. Further dis so we have a motion on the floor, discussion on the motion. All right. So we have a motion. The motion is to approve. The variance with two conditions, one, that no more than 12 cars are sold at one time, and two, that, it's, that the used car sales is an accessory to motor vehicle repair. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Motion variance, it passes. We're receiving communication from the city planner. Move on to the next item on the agenda, item three, Bravo. Any any other new business come before the board? Ms. Crosley. No new business. Any new business from board members? Seeing none, the, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion, do we have a second? We have a second by Mr. Perkins. All those in favor, raise your right hand. We are adjourned. <laughs>